Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution? Or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. Hello, hello, and welcome to Eros Evolution. This is where sexuality and spirituality meet. My name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist with a doctorate in human sexuality, and I am from Eros Coaching. That's EROSCoaching.com. And how are you guys today? Uh, today, we are going to be talking about saying yes to pleasure, and we are going to be with uh, Gaia Mor- Mor- Morissette. So she's a sexuality and um, sexual, sorry, sexual wellness coach and a BDSM life coach. Uh, we'll be talking about the importance of pleasure being the li- missing link to happiness, abundance, health, and intimacy with yourself and the universe. So when we, when we are disconnected from our body and pleasure, we become disconnected from our true selves and all others in our world. And uh, today, she'll be helping us to learn how to let go of the fear that stops us from saying yes to pleasure. Discover how we can reconnect with your source of pleasure and joy in your body, mind, and soul. So, Gaia Morissette has dedicated her life to making the world a happier, sexier, and safer place for us all. She's a world-renowned sexual wellness coach, BDSM life coach, instructor, author, international speaker, and founder of Succulent Living. Through her sexual wellness coaching private practice, she makes sex safe, makes sex better, and takes you to the next level. Her philosophy is that for true sexual wellness to happen, you must look at these five aspects. Play, sensuality, sexuality, exploration, and sacred. Her published book, Stop, Drop, and Wiggle, explores the first aspect, which is our foundation of happiness, play. She is the founder and department head of the Sexual Wellness Coaching Certification Program at the Succulent Living Institute. And we will be talking more about her work. And uh, be sure to check out her website right now. That's succulentliving.com. So welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you. I've been uh, following your work for some time. And um, I know who the people worth watching out there are. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm so glad you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is our theme today. Yes, really, yes, really. yes. So, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, we are talking about yes to pleasure. So um, before that, uh, maybe a little bit more about your work. What is sexual wellness to you and why do you call yourself a sexual wellness coach? So I call myself a sexual wellness coach because for me, I have found that and working with my clients over the last eight years, that there's these five aspects of sexuality. And if any one of those aspects are out of whack, those five that we talked about, play, sensuality, sexuality, exploration, and the sacred, it makes you out of whack as a sexual being. And if you're out of whack as a sexual being, it affects your mind, body, and spirit. So I look at Human sexuality is a holistic approach to life. Mm. Okay, so you mentioned um, the five aspects, which I actually uh, read out just now, uh, play, sensuality, sexuality, exploration, and sacred. Did uh, I lose you? you? Mind, uh, yeah, uh, well, it was in the bio. So um, can, can you tell us more about these five aspects, just to elaborate a little? So the first act of play, and in order for us to play, we have to feel safe. And so that's a lot of the work that I do um, of helping people reclaim and heal from sexual abuse, sexual trauma from their past so that they can feel safe. And what I found is that when you feel safe, you can play and you can risk. And and sexuality is just... Is making sure 
bodies and 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 using all of our senses that uh, that's where we get into the pleasure realm the third aspect is the sexuality and allowing it to turn into orgasmic pleasure and then the fourth aspect which is the exploration this is where we get into exploring alternative lifestyles kinks bdsm um all the sort of more swinging from the chandeliers kind of sexual experience and then the last aspect is the sacred and that's the sacred sexual practices that are you know Taoism Tantra and all the other sacred sexual practices around the world mm, great well done thank you so much I'm sure you have uh, said this many many times but it's uh, very interesting for, for listeners people who are not uh, doing the work that we do uh, and mm -hmm. um, it's so important to give them the vocabulary to understand. So what I what I know, and uh, I'm sure you know, is that a lot of people, uh, they're only dwelling in maybe one aspect, and they think they know mm -hmm. all about sex because they've been doing this for 30 years. And it's boring! It's freaking boring <laughs> to have sex in the same way all the time. <laughs> it's true. So it's really it's important to actually say, no, that's this, that's this, that's this, and it's infinite. There's so many possibilities, so many combinations uh, that can be done. So it's really important to uh, be open, to have lifelong learning, to learn and uh, to yes. explore. So in your work, uh, do you find that there are people who are stuck in their ways and um, that say things like that to you? I get that a lot, which is, oh, yeah, we have three kids. We don't need you. Yes. Well, I, yes, I hear that all the time, um, all the time. Like, oh no, we know how to have sex. And I'm like, yeah, but can you have a hundred orgasms? <laughs> and that's usually how the conversation changes. Like what? A woman can have a hundred orgasms. I'm like, oh yeah. So, and more. And they're like, what do you mean? And that's usually where we start to change the dialogue from what we think you know, the average person thinks of human sexuality of, you know, basically the we kiss, we grope, we have oral sex, we have intercourse, one person ejaculates, the other one goes to sleep, and then they roll over and go to sleep. And it's the same sequence every time. And once we start talking about, um, oh, my voice just keeps cutting out. Oh, that's no good. <laughs> um, so... Where was I? Oh, yes. The more we um, how, open up the dialogue about new possibilities, the better. Great. So important. I, I really appreciate what you just shared because I get I get upset, as you can tell. And instead, mm -hmm. what you do is uh, you invite them to have a dialogue with you with a question. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, a much more alluring uh, practice. And of course, you are very, very seasoned in what you do. So... Uh, yeah, I appreciate what you're saying, that it's important to uh, dialogue with people. So uh, tell us, you know, today's our, uh, show title is uh, Saying Yes to Pleasure. So how do you feel um, pleasure is uh, connected uh, to happiness, uh, financial wellness, uh, health and intimacy? Like why is it so important? Uh, this, this is important because we are making a case for people to say yes to pleasure. Okay, so... First of all, there's all sorts of wonderful, when we have pleasure in our bodies, we allow ourselves, first of all, we give permission to be in the moment in order for, in order for us to um, allow ourselves to be, have pleasure, it means we're present, we're in our bodies, we're in our senses. And then what happens is that um, you start to be more aware of what's going on around you. And when you're more aware, you can have gratitude. And when you have gratitude, it brings you closer to your happiness and your joy. The other thing is, and you know, we can, we'll get, we'll dive deeper into this, but happiness is kind of the whole point of being alive. That's what we're all seeking. You know, we were taught that we should all try to be happy. We don't need to try to find happiness, but happiness starts with, within us. And happiness starts in being present in the moment in our senses and all the pleasure possibilities like smelling your coffee in the morning, uh, listening to the birds sing, uh, feeling the sun on your skin. These are just little bit of our daily pleasure moments. Mm. Yes. 
And if we're not, and if we don't stop, if we don't stop to have those moments, then what we're doing is we're on autopilot and we're not, in, in, we're not even present. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm writing what you're saying down. <laughs> because I love what you're saying. Yeah, so that's why the awkward pauses, but uh, it's completely normal. Uh, I'm in reverence of you. So, yes. Oh, thank so, you. Uh, again, I'm going to re- repeat what you just said. Uh, we need to be in pleasure. We need to uh, be in our bodies when we are aware and we have these uh, pleasure moments. That's when we have uh, gratitude and we have happiness. And when we are more happy, uh, this, is, this is really part of being alive. And uh, you're saying not be in autopilot. And I, I certainly meet a lot of people who are in that mode. And um, they don't look good. They don't look uh, sexy, juicy, or yummy, or vibrant, or succulent. <laughs> No, no, they don't. They have frown lines and they're, and so, you know, uh, we, we're going to have. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. OK, <laughs> so, um, you know, they end up having frown lines and no one likes to hang out with grumpy people. That's the other thing that about attraction, right? Um, when you're happy and you're smiling, people are drawn to you, which then has a benefit from a financial benefit, a work benefit, promotional benefit. There's all these uh, partnership benefit, um, getting action, <laughs> getting laid benefit. Um, there's all these benefits of being a happy, smiley person. People are drawn to you. And if you're grumpy and you're angry and you're on autopilot and you are stressed out all the time and you're high anxiety, people are not drawn to you. Mm. That's great. That's really important. Yeah. So, yes, we'll come back and uh, talk more about the importance of saying yes to pleasure after this break. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by Rain and this station. Oh, my book. Uh, no, it's about three years old. Okay. So welcome back to Arrow's Evolution. You are listening to the show on the Om Times Radio Network, and you can share this show with your friends by going to the link omtimes.com forward slash mobile. With this link, you'll be able to listen to the show without needing to download any app. Hi, my name is Martha, and I'm a clinical sexologist with a doctorate in human sexuality from Arrow's Coaching, E-R-O-S, coaching.com. And today we are talking about saying yes to pleasure with uh, Gaia Morissette. And uh, just before the break, we were talking and unpacking from her the five aspects to true sexual wellness. And um, we talked about the importance of pleasure and how it is connected to 
your happiness, financial abundance, health, and intimacy. Because nobody likes a sulky person. And so there are so <laughs> many benefits. When you're being stressed and anxious, that doesn't make you an attractive person. You're not going to attract. And so pleasure is one of the, in fact, it is the key. And that's why we're saying say yes to pleasure. So, mm -hmm. uh, Gaia, uh, we, we're talking about pleasure today. And uh, what do you think is stopping people from embracing pleasure daily? They're in autopilot. But what, what else is stopping them, you think? Um, I think we also grew up in a culture where it's not okay to be happy and it's not okay to have pleasure and it's not okay to celebrate being alive. And so because culturally we are taught that it's, you know, we are reinforced. For, here's a great example. Um, you're at a restaurant and you're eating something that's absolutely divine. And you won't allow yourself to go, mmm, because if you went, mmm, in the restaurant, everybody's like, what's wrong with you? Mm. Where, so, 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 right? So that's part of it is that mm. culturally we're not supported in celebration of pleasure. Like, mmm, that's delicious, or oh, that's so good, or oh, that feels so good on my face, or you go to the hairdressers the, at the hair salon and you're getting your hair washed, and, and it's so incredibly pleasurable and orgasmic, but you won't allow yourself to receive that pleasure because people will think you're weird. It's not appropriate. So we are kind of been taught that pleasure is only allowed to happen in the confines of the bedroom or within the confines of a sexual uh, relationship. And that's so sad because if you don't allow yourself to feel the daily pleasure of life, being in the body, being in the senses, the five senses, then you can't actually show up in the bedroom and be or your orgasmic God or goddess self because you're so disconnected from it. So there, I think that's a big part of it is one culturally, it's frowned upon for us to celebrate pleasure. Mm. The other... <laughs> <laughs> I also think that the another reason why we don't allow ourselves pleasure is that we don't think we deserve it or we're worthy of it. Mm. Everybody's walking, often most of us are walking around with not feeling lovable, not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy. And so those core values and those core beliefs that we have is in direct opposition to saying, yes, this feels nice. Yes, I this tastes delightful. Yes, this smells wonderful. We That would mean that we would deserve joy, pleasure, and happiness, which... Yeah. We've been taught we, we aren't worth that. So that's another that's another factor in which stops us from saying just saying yes to pleasure and, and thinking that we deserve it. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, just now when you were talking about the restaurant and, uh, you know, eating something that's really divine and not making those mm sounds and really mm -hmm. enjoying it in your body. Uh, fear of not being appropriate. I think the the scene of uh, Mac Ryan comes to into mind where she was faking an orgasm in the mis in the middle of this diner, and so I think there's this association of let's not create a scene, let's not draw attention to ourselves. It's not appropriate, and uh, I, I I get an, entirely what you're saying, which is if we can't be orgasmic, uh, uh, and having pleasure in our daily lives then how can we be orgasmic in the bedroom? Uh, end of the day, it really is a, a practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, mm. it's, it's like it's like go from zero to 60. Well, you need to have something to rev your engines up. That's the other part of it is like, if you're in pleasure mode all day long and you've had say like 20 pleasure moments throughout your day, like those moments where you're like, wow, mm, that's so beautiful. Wow, that smells so good. Oh, that tastes so good. Oh, this, you know, the pants against my skin feels so nice. You're kind of already starting that arousal in your body all day long. So when it comes to time, whether it's your self-exploration with yourself, you're going to make love to yourself, or you're going to make love with a partner, you're already primed. You've been doing foreplay all day long. Yes, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. 
I feel like you're talking to me. <laughs> I <feel like laughs> <doing> this. <laughs> then I can have uh, more juiciness and yumminess and money in my life. I need to be doing yes. this. <laughs> so, so well, and money. The one... Yes, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead, and then I'll go into money. Oh, no, I was just saying, uh, sometimes uh, when you're ready, the teacher appears, and uh, we are each other's teacher. And so oh, even yes. though I'm the host, and I'm a sexologist, I'm supposed to know everything, sometimes uh, it's it's important to be open to reminders. And uh, I'm, I'm being reminded even right now. So thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And yes, that's so true. It's, uh, you know, I had a wonderful podcast this morning with another sex expert and she did the same thing for me. So it goes around. What goes around comes around. <laughs> Great. Thank you. So just, uh, just uh, uh, the other one that you mentioned is um, the feeling of undeservingness and worthiness that we feel that we are not good enough. I think that these are the stories that we tell ourselves and, um, uh, yeah, and uh, how can we overcome that, you think? Well, one of the great things that I love, to, one of the great tools I love to use is um, mantras um, or affirmations, positive reinforcement and affirmations, and doing them in the mirror. So depending on what it is that we're struggling with, but talking about pleasure, one of the, my favorite ones is, I deserve pleasure. Mm. I deserve pleasure. I deserve pleasure. And then I'll say, I say yes to pleasure. Mm. Mm. I say yes to pleasure. Mm. Mm. I say <laughs> yes to pleasure. Mm. Mm. And then the third one will be pleasure is my friend. Because everybody likes a friend. friend. Mm. Pleasure is my friend. Pleasure is my friend. Now, it's really important that when we do mantras or affirmations, positive reinforcers, that we say it three times and we need to say it out loud. And it's even more powerful if you can say it looking at yourself in the mirror. Because the first time you say it, your subconscious mind is going to be like, yeah, I don't think so. The second time you say it, your subconscious is like, well, perhaps. It's only in the third time that your subconscious even remotely thinks that that might be a possibility. So the first two times, you're not actually changing anything. Yeah, got it. I okay. deserve pleasure. I say yes mm -hmm. to pleasure, mm, and pleasure is my friend. Yeah, perfect. So that's a good one to start. If you do that every day in front of the mirror, and it's good to put it up on a post-it note or write it on your mirror with some lipstick um, so that when you go and brush your teeth, you see it, so you'll say it. Uh, when you go to the bathroom, you'll see it, and you'll say it. Because your subconscious mind, that part of you that feels that you aren't worthy of pleasure, you're not worthy, you're not good enough, all those things, will find ways for you to forget to say it because it doesn't want you to change. Okay, that's great to know. So it's really, really, so, it's really, really important that you write it on the mirror or you put it on a post-it note by your bathroom mirror. Hmm. Yeah, let let this get into your body, and uh, even even I think this um, mantra will also help you with money because in order to have uh, more pleasure and more pleasure into your life, that um, uh, money comes in to facilitate that to happen. So for those people, I think who have money issues, um, this is uh, something that they can uh, embody first because then uh, the money will come in. I I believe. Well, I did this really cool thing over the last year around money and orgasm and tying them to for uh, manifestation. Mm. And so what I did was I took uh, money and I had an orgasm with it. 
So it had the juicy energy attached to the money. And then I put the money up on my bathroom mirror. And every time I go into the bathroom, I have these wonderful mantras that I say, with every orgasm, my bank account fills with money. Mm. Money, you are my friend, you are my lover, you're my venture buddy. And then I blow it kisses and I rub, I rub it. So what it's done is, is it's changed that feeling of ickiness around money to it now being my best friend, my lover, and my adventure buddy. And what I've actually found that since I've been doing this this last year, my income has increased four times what it was last year at this time of year. And I haven't done anything different other than this money manifestation and anchoring it to my pleasure and anchoring it to my orgasms. And it's really cool because when I go out and I have a bunch of orgasms in a day, and all of a sudden, money shows up in my account. <laughs> it's like magic. It's like orgasm money Beautiful. magic. Beautiful. Thank you so yes. much for sharing that. So the mantra is, with every orgasm, my bank is filling up? Yeah, my bank account fills with money. My bank account fills with money. My bank account fills with money. Yeah. Uh, another one of my one of my mantras that I okay. use is um, may my money and wealth manifest as quickly and often as bunnies. We all know how much bunnies like to hump <laughs> and make baby bunnies. So I visualize like little bunny rabbits humping and then popping out baby money baby bunnies. <laughs> When I do it, which makes me laugh, which brings joy. Mm. Beautiful. Time flies. Uh, so we have another commercial break and we'll come back and uh, share more with Gaia Morissette. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. What's up? This is Brad and Mike from Lincoln Park for Life Beat, the music industry fights AIDS. Listen up, times are tough and you get a lot of things thrown your way. If you're being pressured to have sex and you're not ready, then say no. If you're having sex, be smart and use protection. Respect yourself and protect yourself. For more information, call the National AIDS Hotline at 1-800-342-AIDS or log on to www.lifebeat.org. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Arrow's no, Evolution. This is where we explore the link between sex and spirit. And my name is Martha. I'm a clinical sexologist uh, with a doctorate in human sexuality. I'm based in Singapore, and you can find me at eroscoaching.com. And uh, today we are with our beautiful, fantastic, amazing guest. Uh, her name is um, Gaia Morissette, and she is... Uh, so many things. She's a sex, sexual wellness coach, BDSM life coach, instructor, author, international speaker, and founder of Succulent Living. Her education and training consists of sexology, trauma recovery, life coaching, tantra training, sex coaching, 
and lots of practice in the areas of play, healing, and exploring. And be sure to check out her website, that's succulentliving.com. And she's on Twitter as uh, Gaia Morissette. That's M-O-R-R-I-S-S-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. And on Facebook, succulent-living. Look for her, succulent living. She's amazing. I love what she's sharing with us today. <laughs> and I love, I love your uh, money and um, orgasm manifestation. This is end of the year. Surely you want more money coming your way to buy those Christmas presents. So once again, I repeat uh, her practice, which is hold on to the money, orgasm with your money, on your money, uh, put it on your bathroom uh, window, I mean a uh, mirror, and every mm -hmm. single time you say, let us be a reminder that you can use your mantras, and she suggested hers, which is uh, with every orgasm, my bank account is filling up, uh, fills up with money, sorry. My bank account fills up with money. Uh, money, you are my friend, lover, and adventure buddy. Another one is may my money and wealth manifest as fast as bunny. Beautiful. Yes. Play around <laughs> with it. Come on with your own. <laughs> well, the beautiful thing is about whether we're talking about health or wealth or happiness, it all is about play. You know, we talked about that first aspect, play. And the more fun we have, the more we attract more fun to our lives. Mm. That's great. That's really important. It's true. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's that's yes. what I. That's, <laughs> that's what I, it's, it, it's a true statement. <laughs> it's true. Oh, yes. So you teach, uh, you teach Tantra as well, or you just teach uh, um, um, BDSM and uh, coach your clients and all these things? I do. I do teach Tantra, but I teach Tantra. Well, I'm tantric. I can't help it. Everything that I do is Tantra. Uh, I wake up in the morning, it's tantric. <laughs> I go to sleep at night, it's tantric. So yeah. um, for me, it's about teaching about being present and all that being present and being in this human form can bring to us. And that it's through our human experience that we reach higher states of uh, awareness, um, connection, divine, all that comes from being human, not from denying our humanness, but embracing our humanness. And human sexuality is a great byproduct of the benefits of being human. And we can achieve those higher states of consciousness through using, con like consciously using sexual energy to manifest and to make that happen. Like we talked about the money that was using sexual energy uh, to manifest wealth. So, which is a tantric. So it's all, for me, it's all about that tantric philosophy, but not just being in the happy orgasm land, but also what it means to be human means being grumpy and being angry and being sad and feeling lonely and the whole gamut of human emotions. But the beautiful thing the teach, for my teachings in Tantra is that we don't stay stuck in any one of those experiences. We, we have the experience, we embrace it, and then we move on to the next experience. Mm. It keeps us always present in this here and this now. Mm. Great. So share with us a little bit about what about those negative emotions that come up or negative experiences. Um, surely, uh, how, uh, what, do, what would you say about staying present uh, during those times? So when we're sitting in the more unpleasant spectrum of emotions, because <laughs> there's no good or bad emotions, yeah. right? There's just fun ones and not so fun ones. <laughs> So when we're in the not-so-fun ones, the key is to not judge that emotion. You mm -hmm. just like you put a timer on it. So you allow yourself 30 seconds to a minute to fully feel it, like a child has a full-on meltdown tantrum. You just feel it. There's no judgment. You just experience it. You feel it. Once you then feel it, 
The key is to do the next step, which is an emotional state change. And that's where we choose to no longer stay stuck in that emotion anymore. And there's three easy ways to change your emotional state and change all the biochemicals that are happening in your body that's associated with those unpleasant emotions. Stress hormones, cortisol, and these kinds of things, adrenaline. So the three that change, can easily change that, laughing for 60 seconds, okay. having an orgasm, or working out for 30 minutes. Mm. So you choose one of those three things. Now you're no longer in that emotion anymore. And then you can delve deeper into, now you're, you're not in the emotion, so you can process it, right? So is it something that is you need to change in your life so that that scenario doesn't keep happening? Do you need to do some creative problem solving in your life? Or is it just attached to the past and it needs to just be let go? Or as I like to call it, uh, batshit crazy, where there is no rhyme or reason, it just is. <laughs> And there's nothing to do but just to let it go. And we all have that. We all have that thinking processes that doesn't serve us. And I like to call them batshit crazy thoughts. Mm. And then you release. So then you know now you're not in the emotions anymore. And now you can decide what you need to do with the thoughts. So that it doesn't perpetuate and keep happening in your life. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. I love the very practical practices that you have said. And um, uh, it's really about, I feel, uh, changing the state of your mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I understand why you laugh so much. Um, and you have a beautiful laugh, by the way. Um, Thank be you. Because it shifts, it shifts your vibration. It does. It does. And, yeah, so and they've done studies. from you. They've done so. They've done so many yeah. clinical studies on what happens to our bodies and our minds and our emotional state when we laugh, and we can choose. This is the beautiful thing that I love about life: is that we get to choose how we want to live it, based on do we react to life. Or do we respond to life? We allow ourselves to have our feelings, but we don't let our feelings control us. We, and that's the key, is that we have this power, we have this choice, and it's all about each moment I choose to stay in my misery and suffering, or I choose to move into happiness and joy. I choose in every, mo every, every moment, I choose to say yes to pleasure and have a pleasure moment, or I can choose to be grumpy and angry. And the key is that what we've, we've been taught that we are victims. And being, and being in that victim mentality, what that does is it prevents us from feeling like we have any say, any power, any control over anything that happens in our lives. And when you realize, wow, I can choose how I want to live my life, which means that you can choose what kind of life you want to have, what kind of relationships you want to have, what kind of job do you want to have, what kind of friends do you want to surround yourself with? Do you, what kind, are you filled with, is your life filled with happiness and joy and, and growth? Or is your life filled with sadness and depression and sickness and anger? Mm. That's great. Yeah, I'm writing what you're saying down. So it's a choice. And uh, what, what is coming up for me is um, the word emotional resilience. When uh, the more we practice this uh, being in of choice, choosing and choosing again and again, uh, happiness, joy, versus being in our mood, then we develop uh, resilience, and it's it's like a muscle that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we get stronger. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, I have signs all over my house that say, I choose happiness now. I have one on the a big one on my door before I leave the house. I have them all over my house. And then I also have signs all over my house that says, I choose pleasure now. Mm. And what I, when I see those signs, it's a reminder, oh, that's right, to check in with myself. Am I choosing happiness and joy and zen, or am I choosing to stay stuck in whatever, you know, whatever, um, you know, misery, suffering, sadness, anger, frenzy, anxiety, stress mode that I've been in? Am I choosing to stop and enjoy all the sensory pleasure of my day? Or am I just in my head and on autopilot? So even though I teach this and even though I practice this and I'm an expert in this, I need to be reminded all the time. Yeah. Yes. And this is this is why some people are juicy and succulent and others <laughs> are not. Because they are exactly. not practicing choice and they're not reminding themselves to practice choice. And mm -hmm. uh, here you are, we have the same, uh, uh, you know, like uh, one of the things that I uh, that is coming up for me is this assumption that people who are happy and succulent and juicy and vibrant, uh, they have it easier. And actually, oh, no. we all <laughs> yeah, we all have challenges. It's about what yes. you choose to do with it that makes you look different. So this yep. is really powerful stuff you're sharing. And uh, we have a break again, and uh, we'll we'll wrap up the show after this break. So stay tuned. Okay. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Home Times Radio. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not look the other way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us, all of us, to, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. into the last 15 minutes of today's show and today it has been really beautiful we've been saying yes to pleasure with uh, Gaia Morissette and be sure to go to her website that's succulentliving.com and uh, just before break we were also uh, unpacking more about the importance of being in pleasure we talked about uh, besides the importance of pleasure today we talked about how you can shift from being in negative state to a more positive one. And the three practices includes laughing for 30, uh, 60 seconds, having an orgasm, and uh, working out for 30 minutes. And, uh, um, um, sorry, <laughs> Gaia also uh, shared with us her uh, mantra, uh, which is, I choose happiness now. And being of choice is coming back to our power and control. We can control the state of our vibration by shifting this um, thinking that we have and uh, I feel the more we do it the more emotionally resilient we will be so as we unpack uh, uh, the show as we start to wind down uh, this is a question that I often ask all my guests and uh, because this show explores the link between sex and spirit and I've often in interviewed many uh, 
sexuality educators. So, uh, Gaia, what do you have to say about the link between uh, sexuality and spirit in your own words? For me, sex and spirit and spirituality are the, the ways in which I actually achieve my connection to divine. And it's through my vagina, through my orgasms, through my pleasure that allows me to talk to divine. Uh, so I have a, a very powerful sexual, sacred sexual practice with myself and the universe. Mm. Beautiful. Did that explain it? <laughs> it's a big question. <laughs> it's big, but it's uh, it's beautiful, and um, I'm I'm just meditating on it, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like for me, it's like like every day I make love to the universe, and the universe makes love to me. And it's in those states that I heal. I heal my own stuff. It's where I get my downloads of where I'm supposed to be, what my purpose is. It's, you know, being, I have a practice being in the flow with my flow. So my menstruation. So when, again, that's that, that sacred sexual practice and, and the sacred of my uterus, you know, the power of my divine sexual femininity comes from that whole, my genitals and my reproduction organs. And it's going into that cycle that makes me connected to the universe. And the universe then tells me, where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, it's how I surrender to the universe is through my sexual practice with it. <laughs> Mm. Beautiful. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm uh, getting from you is how powerful you are and how much you embody this um, importance of pleasure. And you see uh, that the, you're making love with the universe in your daily life. Mm -hmm. So how did you get to this point? I guess that's the question that listeners have. Um, I think for me, so a little bit of a background is that I came from a lot of sexual abuse trauma, um, childhood sexual abuse trauma, as okay. well as satanic ritual abuse growing up and pleasure, like life, like laughter and celebration of being alive and the, those little pleasure moments of, you know, smelling, stopping and smelling a flower or watching the, the, the dew on the grass shimmer in the sunshine is what actually kept me sane mm. and allowed me to get through all the horrendous things that I endured and allowed me to find my connection to the universe through the elements around me. And so it wasn't a it wasn't a big jump for me to move from that to when I came across Tantra, when I was taught about Tantra. And I was like, oh my God, that's what's been wrong with me. <laughs> I was that I was like, I have too much sexual energy and I don't know how to harness it for good instead of self-destruction. And so when I blended those two concepts oh together, God. thank you so much. You're welcome. And while I, so once I blended those two worlds together, it was just natural for me. It was like breathing. It was like giving myself permission to be like, wow, the, my connection to my sexual power is my connection to the universe. And the universe is always talking to me through my environment around me. And all I have to do is be still and receive and listen and let go of control. Stop being a control freak. Mm. 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 Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing about your personal life because, uh, you know, knowing where you have come from and what you have had to endure, first of all, makes you come across as a lot more human and uh, more relatable and actually even more powerful because, you know, this is not just something flippant. I mean, I feel mm -hmm. your power, but now knowing your backstory 
it it really uh, gets us to really see the importance of of it. I feel. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's the thing is that pleasure in life is what a lot like choosing life, choosing pleasure, choosing happiness is what allowed me to become this incredible woman that I have become and to be able to share those experiences with the world. And so that that's why pleasure and saying yes and choice and and celebration is so passionate for me because it comes from how I survived. Mm. And not just su survived, but thrived. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, wow. Whew. So uh, for listeners out there, um, what do you think that they can uh, begin to practice with? You know, the, the many things that you've mentioned. Uh, is there one single uh, practice that you feel that they should start doing immediately, um, maybe daily? I would say, okay, I would, there's three things that you should start with. One, those mantras that we talked about. Mm, yes. Important. Start that today. Get off, stop listening. When, you, when, when the radio show's done, go write your mantras on your mirror. Start that today. Yes. The second thing is that I want you to start being present in your body. And, start, and the way to be present in your body is you're going to set three alarms on your phone or on whatever device that you have that's with you all the time. And these alarms are going to go off and you are going to have a sensory pleasure moment. You're going to stop. Mm. You're going to pick one of your five senses, and you're really going to slow down and be in that sense for 10 to 30 seconds. That's it. And even when it goes off it. while you're while – you're, so your five senses, just so everybody knows, sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. Yeah. And the third thing that I want you to do – is your Kegels. This will get you connected to your root chakra, which is connection to the earth and divine and all these other things. But it also help you for from a from a physiological level, both male and female, do your Kegels. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And breathe. Squeeze and breathe. And you want to get work up to 100 a day. So 10 sets of 10. The best way to do that is to anchor that into something that you already do in your life. So for me, every time I'm standing at a line, I'm doing my Kegels. Every time I'm at a red light, I do my Kegels. Every time I'm at a stop sign, I'm doing my Kegels. That'll help you be, come back into your body, get connected, get grounded, and it all has amazing health benefits. As well as if you yeah. decide that you want to delve deeper into some of the sacred sexual practices, your Kegels are your pump. It's how we create our sexual energy. It's how we move our sexual energy. So it's also really important. Mm. And laugh That's more. Wonderful. Okay. You know, have oh, laugh, laugh, laugh more. You said. Laugh, laugh more. more. Yes. And and the best way to laugh if you can't seem to find something funny is to find a recording of babies and children laughing because laughter is contagious. So when you start to listen to them, it'll start to make you giggle. And then the more you giggle, the more you'll laugh. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So for listeners out there, we're probably one minute to the end of today's show. So be, uh, remember, you know, there's so much that um, uh, Gaia Morissette is sharing with us today. And she has a book, okay, it's called Stop, Drop, and Wiggle. And if you love what she's been sharing today, which I love, you can actually mm -hmm. get her book and you can go to her website, that's Succulent Living. And also, don't forget that you can uh, hang out with her and you can... Hire her by uh, to support your own sexual awakening and healing. 
And uh, so her website, once again, is uh, succulentliving.com. That, uh, do I need to spell it for you? That's S-U-C-C-U-L-E-N-T, succulent living, okay, just in case. And uh, it, this is, has been a, an amazing show, uh, maybe uh, because of the reminder that I need for myself right now to say yes to pleasure. And so mm-hmm. many things that I've unpacked. And uh, there are four uh, additional practices that she just mentioned. Uh, remember, she talked about uh, practicing the mantras that she's given you, uh, setting two alarms on your phone to come back to your sensation, the five senses. 10 to 30 seconds. She talked about kegels, doing your pelvic floor squeezes, and it's very grounding. And when you strengthen your base, the rest of your body will follow uh, 100 times a day and to laugh more. So, thank you so much for coming to the show, uh, Gaia Morissette. Thank you. You're welcome, and thanks for having me. You were lovely. Thank you. It was wonderful. So, next week, it's Thanksgiving. I have a different guest, and her name is uh, Adele, and we, uh, she's, a, she's, a, she's a different kind of a coach. She's a success coach, so stay tuned.